Y'all, I've just been on the most romantic week of my entire freaking life. And feeling this like deep desire to tell you about the up levels that are happening inside of Sacred Single. So if you are new to my world, hi, my name is Laura Patricia Martin. I am a trauma-informed relationship specialist. I blend the science and the soul for the modern woman and really bridge that gap for conversations around dating and relationships and singlehood as a high achieving woman in this world. That makes sense because a lot of the things are just kind of not in alignment. And so if you're new to my world, currently Sacred Singlehood is on early enrollment and this is our four week program where it's a hybrid. It is a program that meets a mastermind that has revolutionary outcomes for people that are looking to put two feet in on healing their energy leaks around relationships and looking to heal their relationships with themselves and really quantum leap into that arena. It's, it's, it's that next edge. It's holding yourself in that next edge. And it's about changing the way that you see yourself. It's changing the way that you handle and experience pleasure and play and intimacy in life, relationships and business. It's, it's upgrading your nervous system edges so that you can actually hold this next level. That's what sacred singlehood is. And so I wanna talk about that today. And I wanna do a quick little mini training around building self-trust. I wanna share a story here that, you know, I just like went into my mastermind and I was sharing about this like surprise weekend getaway that my partner just like woke me up dressed like a freaking lunatic at 6 a.m. on Friday and was like, pack two bags, we're going. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? And he ended up stealing me away to a surprise little post Valentine's Day getaway. And just like what led to this moment, right? Like I, I know so many people crave that. Like, how do I get my partner to do the work? How do I get someone that wants to commit in that way? How do I get someone that's committed in that way? How do I get someone that, you know, cares that much? And really at the root of that was building self-trust with self because, you know, last time anyone stole me away for a weekend away was my girlfriends because I was in a domestically violent relationship and they wanted to get me away and that was five years ago. Fast forward to now. Right? Like, how does that, how does that bridge happen? And so I've been sitting and pondering on my flight home today. I'm just like, in pure gratitude that I really wish people knew that it gets to be honestly unimaginable. I was saying in my own pure mastermind where it's like, I couldn't have even visioned this up in my mastermind. I can hear people talk about stuff like this, but because my vision of self and my perception of self was so warped for so long, that I didn't think that it was possible for me, so I was willing to settle, right? And so I wanna take you through that journey. I wanna show you just a peek inside what sacred singlehood is. And if this lands on your heart, I invite you to come join us. We are starting middle of March, and I just had the craziest download on the plane ride over here that it's gonna be pre-recorded modules. Like there's already seven in there, but I'm gonna add two to four more extra ones because I'm currently studying a certain somatic style for attachment theory and I want to add that in and then we're going to add in this telegram group for a mastermind aspect so you get live coaching hands-on support for me for those four weeks inside of telegram so I will pop in I will answer your questions you'll know this is actually how we heal triggers like it's fantastic to learn what's happening in our body but the real time change happens when you're in the arena in the midst of the trigger, when you're in the midst of the celebration, when you're in the midst of the pivot, it's what do I do now because I'm having this trigger? What, what's happening and we talk ourselves through it. So we're adding that aspect in and I'm so fucking excited about it. So let me know if you wanna join. Right now it is 25% off, which is fabulous until Friday and then price increases. So building self-trust, right? So I'm gonna take you through a story. So five years ago, I was in a domestically violent relationship I was taken away to an island because I had been beaten so bad that I was hospitalized, I had a brain bleed, crushed ribs, like it, it, it was a wreck. And I still couldn't leave that relationship. I didn't have trust in anything, especially not myself, but what my body knew and what I can look at now is that my nervous system actually knew what that was. That was predictable. The disappointment, the fear, the living in chaos, the, the cheating and the, 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 all of that, my nervous system actually viewed that as safe. And so if you're navigating anything in your life and it's feeling like, why the fuck am I doing this? Why am I repeating these things over and over again? Why do I have this feast and famine mentality? Why do I have 
um, these people coming into my life and these repeated relationship patterns or wealth problems and you know the fast and famine when it comes to that why do I feel like you know I'm stuck in the survivor complex and like I'm really good at like when I'm just at rock bottom and I can always pick myself up and do these kind of things why is that your nervous system actually finds safety in that that's where mine was and so I remember when I was trying to leave that relationship I didn't have the knowledge I have now I just had this hit in my nervous system that was like we're not supposed to be doing this alone like I something in my brain isn't working correctly and so i started to build these things and this is why i do free master classes is why i do the things that i do and the, the hands-on transformation part is the juice and ju i was going to say juice and potatoes but that sounds weird um but you get what i mean meat and potatoes but the free things because that's what i was leaning into at the time i loved ted talks i loved podcasts i started to lean into this stuff because i knew my brain wasn't functioning in the way that i wanted to i just didn't have the knowledge as to what was happening and so instead of actually healing what was going on in my body and building trust and doing these things i then built a company i built healing to happy 1.0 which was an ibs anxiety company it was very successful when i was living in asia and i just shamed this version of myself this girl that was abused and neglected and self-abandoned and codependent and trauma bonded and chronically ill and eating disorders and addictions like I just kind of shamed her and pretended she didn't exist because I built an entirely new identity and in that identity I closed off any type of intimacy because I didn't trust myself to ever touch that again because I saw what could happen if I loved someone so much I would lose myself I would lose respect for myself i'd lose the business i'd lose any type of tools that i had and i built up my business to this level that i was like no one can touch this no one can touch this and i just kept saying like i'm just too busy today or my business comes first or it's just not in the cards for me right now which are all very true it just wasn't a part of my identity yet and then it started to happen that i was like okay maybe i should start dating Right? And so I dated, I talked about this in this, the previous live that I did, it was like the turning point man, I dated a friend and I wasn't the best person to him because I didn't heal my trauma. I was escaping, I created, I, I, I was basically walking all over him and not being the nicest human being. And it wasn't until he finally left that relationship that I was sitting there and I was like, damn. I really need to look at, like, I don't ever want to do that to a person again. And that's these times of things, these kinds of things, which I talked about in the last slide, which was like right place, wrong, or right person, wrong time. That's how I viewed this, where it was like, it was that, but how do I make it the right time then? How do I pivot so that when the right, next right person comes, because I've never really believed in the one, or like, there's one kindred soul like I believe love is a choice you just have to be both ready for the moment of that choice so in my head it's like okay so what do I need to do to do this and this is what started to birth sacred singlehood and I didn't even know at the time this is what I was doing because I wasn't in trauma yet and I wasn't I was in IBS anxiety I was in the gut brain connection I was in neuroscience like that was my world and I was like okay I need to start looking at myself I need to start spending time with myself like it was this moment I remember someone had asked and they're like, what do you like? And I was like, working and working out. And they're like, outside of the things of your accomplishments, like, what do you like? I had no idea. Because the thing about outrunning a past, outrunning traumas of that magnitude or of anything, of being bullied in childhood, if that's your thing, of parents not giving you the attention that you wanted, of being bullied in the outcasts of your family or your siblings or some type of family member or some boyfriend or some girlfriend or some friend group, like not being able to sit at the table, whatever your narrative is, if you've built up then an identity to prove yourself, I am worthy of being at this table and look at all the accomplishments I have and look at all the things that I did and look at all the money that I've made and look at all the stages I've spoken on and look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Something that happens at the high level time and time again is it starts with strategy and it ends in relationship conversation because the problem is we haven't actually learned to trust self, right? I know I didn't. 
this is something I still sometimes grapple with and this is when I have to turn back into sacred singlehood and really tap into these practices because we're human. We get activated. Our brain is this cute, kinky little motherfucker that likes to play some tricks sometimes and it's a human experience and you have to let it flow. And when I'm witnessing these things, it's like, wow, I didn't actually build trust with self. I just built a new identity that was a hungry ghost, what they'd call it. And I forget who that is, but not mine, but they call it a hungry ghost. Like there is no satisfying this hungry ghost within yourself. You need to achieve more, you need to do more, you need to have more accomplishment, your body needs to look a certain way, you need to have this type of partner, of this type of stature, and make this amount of money until someone can actually love you, and you need to look this way, and be this age, and do these things, hungry, 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 never satisfied. And I remember when I was starting to notice these things, I was like, I can't be alone, and I don't really know what to do, what if I'm not working, like I don't but I'm not satisfied. I remember I had hit my numbers for my first launch of Gut Recharge, which was my first ever program that I launched. And I was sitting in a cafe in Thailand and I closed the laptop and I was like, fuck. This feeling is still here. And that was when I first started to hire my first life coach. Cause again, I realized I'm not meant to be doing this alone. You are not meant to be doing this alone. A lot of us have this shame and this guilt about these little insecurity wounds about, and they're not little, sorry to say that, like these insecurity wounds that kind of take over our entire lives. We're not meant, we can't see our blind spots. So I hired my first life coach. I remember going on this journey and starting to witness how I don't trust myself and how, how am I going to start to do that? So I started to actively spend Friday nights alone and spend time alone and starting to look at where am I trying to prove myself? Where am I trying to really solidify what I deem as successful from how much is in my bank account and what size jeans I'm wearing? Beyond just how much I love and what my friendships are like and you know if I'm actually healthy, if I'm getting enough sleep, if I'm having enough orgasms, if I actually know what intimacy and play and pleasure actually mean. I believe what well, women feel it. And all these kind of things are happening, right? And at the core now, that's what I deem as successful. And don't get me wrong, my brain still gets tripped up sometimes where it's like, I didn't have my biggest month yet and I didn't do this and I'm in a mastermind where they're making fucking 600,000, <laughs> like all these kind of things and the comparison trap kind of comes in. But I remember I was sitting with my partner yesterday, yesterday, because I was in my spiral. I was in this moment in my head because I'm still fucking human. Or it's like, I haven't hit this number and I haven't done this and it's this day and all the kind of things that entrepreneurs run through and I remember sitting there just getting back from the most romantic weekend of my life with a man that I have to say things one time and in a way like all I said was like it's our first Valentine's Day and like I wanted to mean something like I want to remember this for a lifetime and I let it go and this man I like that type of love in the friendships and the health even though this isn't my smallest or fittest size and it's like what is it what does it truly matter and i remember thinking this and this is what a big transition of this was was when covid happened i don't know if i can say this on this but I remember it's, I, I was hustling and hustling and hustling, very much trauma response, like not leaving my house and just pumping out content and jumping into programs and jumping into things. And I remember sitting and thinking like, what is it all worth? If I don't feel love, like if I don't, like I don't know how to pause, I don't know how to savor, I don't know how to slow down. I don't know how to sleep in. I don't know how to even like enjoy sex without just like needing it to be over so that I can get on to the next thing. Like, I don't, I don't know. And I wanted love. I wanted love so much. And I saw my life and how I was building things in Thailand and it was fantastic. Like best chapter. I mean, one of the best chapters, it, it set me on my way. And it was in that choice where it was like, what, am I, what do I want to do about that? 
because I know a lot of us do this where it's like it's that repeated thing in our head where it's like I know I want to focus on relationships I know I want to heal my trauma I know I want to have more intimacy and play and pleasure in my life but like I don't have time yet or when I hit this number then I'll do it. When I do this, then I'll do it. And it's this continuation where it's like, we're always making excuses and buying business programs instead of actually doing the work to find our feminine energy. It was the thing that was missing in my entire life was this feminine energy. I remember talking to one of my best friends being like, I just want to be more feminine. And I had no idea what the fuck that meant because everything looked so woo woo and it didn't make sense to me. And really what that meant was I had to heal my trauma. The modes of protection that I had built around my heart from all these all of these life experiences that I've built up these nervous system strategies and systems to keep my heart protected and keep myself in place, which is what being obsessed with my business was. And I had to pause. And so I closed my office in Thailand and I was like, I'm on my way to go find a future husband and slow down and rebuild. And it was in that point I realized, fuck, kid, we have built up enough trust to trust that we can do that that we can build again but better that i can do this in my own way that wasn't just being a yes woman and outrunning my traumas and trying to distract myself from the pains which maybe you're not even at that stage yet but oftentimes that's what we're doing is just we're not afraid of being lazy we're afraid of the space that feminine flow gives us the rest the pause the time throughout the day and so I closed my office in Thailand booked a flight and my going away party was legitimately my friends having a surprise bachelorette party for me (laughs) because they knew that was my plan and three weeks later I boarded a plane because I made that choice that I trust me I trust me to figure it out was it fucking easy absolutely fuck not coming from America after a third world six years in a third world country wow during political season wow single without a home wow like but i had an intuitive hit have you ever and my mastermind just asked this where it was like have you ever had an intuitive hit that just you knew that's what you needed but then the mind kicks in where it's like not yet not yet we need to figure out how to get 10k months 12 20k months first before and then we'll focus on relationship we need to be at six figures and then we can start dating we need to be at this body size and then we can start dating and focusing on ourselves but until we do that then i can't take the time because i don't have time where would i fit that in where would i fit in sacred singlehood how would i fit that in i need to get my business to this not realizing what is the whole point of the business to have freedom, to have time for your relationships. Money is nice, sure. And I get it, it it provides. But who are you along that journey? And if you haven't figured that out yet, that is what sacred sacred singlehood is. Who are you on that path? Who do you want to be on that path? Because I look back at the first business I wrote, I built. And although financially fantastic, on the cover of on magazines, speaking at universities, on stages basically every other week, like sold out events. Fantastic. The fact that my best friend had to see me on Saturday, that's what this tattoo is, Rose Saturday, had to see me on Saturdays with a bottle of wine to steal me away from my laptop and how unreliable I was to people and how like I get it, entrepreneurship is just a selfish thing that we choose like it it just is but there's a way of doing it where we don't have to lose our life in the process and the relationships that we build come from this and to fast forward right to fast forward to what boarding the plane and doing the things it's like cracked open after a heartbreak where like i use the tools from sacred singlehood to quantum leap that and now find the love that i have that even taught, I mean, I did just get home today and it's a long distance relationship, so I am a little emotional, but like even just talking about it, that's why I don't share it online because it is so sacred to me. And I want everyone to have that and you don't have to give up your business. I don't have, like, I don't give up. I travel, I traveled five countries in three months of knowing him. Like, 
you get to truly have it all and it starts with the trust you have with yourself if you trust yourself to be able to hold that all do you trust yourself to cultivate balance do you trust yourself to really heal your nervous system to expand the edges to hold that new level because where you're at right now probably doesn't have that because you haven't had it and so in our minds this is why i was saying my partner like he wouldn't even be imaginable to me because it wasn't in my nervous system radar even like even eight months ago like not in it it was like this cute idea but like that kind of level your nervous system can only create stories around what it's known on your experiences that's what that's how we create these strategies that's what somatics is that's literally my specialty my bread and my butter that's what we dive into more inside of these bonus modules inside of everything i do it's more sciencey and for the left brainers plus strategy and application and all the kind of things but when you're moving through these things and your brain is going to create a story of like yeah but it's not the right time yet that's your sexy brain doing its kinky little things with its edges it's trying to protect you that's all it is like yes sometimes like this is why in my programs i'm always like reach out we can create extended payment plans i never want you to step into my programs with a dysregulated nervous system i want you to be stretched because that's part of the fucking magic of just like jumping in and enrolling in things like that's the fucking high that builds trust where it's like fuck i'm doing this fuck i'm showing up to this holy pickles my whole life is changing look at who i called in look at the business i now run look at how easy this is like that's part of it but i never want you to be stressed in survival and so we play with this in our nervous system and we witness it and this is how we build trust over and over and over again witnessing where's my brain starting to play this trick on me where is my brain trying to tell me i don't deserve someone this nice because i haven't hit a certain amount i literally laid on his floor in his office yesterday being like will you still love me if i'm homeless (laughs) not that things are mattering though but just like entrepreneur brain like what if By the time we're supposed to move together in seven months and everything goes to shit and I get canceled and something happens and would you still love me? Like the brain will do these funny things and then you build that trust of like that would never happen again. That would never ever happen because you have such trust in yourself to build something out and you continue to go. I don't know where I was going on that tangent, but I was just thinking of the story where it's like we all have these things that these fears they get in our way and they can either stop you which a lot of us let them. I could have just sat on that floor all day long. I could have said, fuck it, I'm just gonna be a waitress. I did say that, (laughs) but I didn't mean it. (laughs) Like, and people do so often. And they, you know, I'm speaking business because I feel like that's a big chunk of my community, but we do that in relationship. Fuck it. It hasn't happened yet. So I'm just going to throw myself into work and stop focusing on this stuff because it's too activating. Because the truth is relationships and the reason we are the loneliest we've ever been but the most connected we've ever been and the reason we can get copious amounts of dates but we can't hold them long term is because attaching to someone, long term dating someone presents shadows. And if you don't know this about yourself, you're going to react to them and you're going to cut them loose or you're going to treat them like shit or you're going to self-sabotage or something's going to happen and you're going to repeat a cycle and this whole time it's just your shadow trying to release itself. Every time someone gets close, we talk about this inside of Shattered. So if you are new to my world, I have a free five-day challenge. You can go check out. It's fucking extraordinary. It's the best work I've ever done, ever. And it's fucking free for at least Q1, so until the end of March. Um... But that's what happens in relationship where it's like, okay, so I'm feeling triggered because this person is close to me and I'm being vulnerable vulnerable with this person. And this generally happens around the three month mark if we're properly pacing ourselves, but nowadays we're kind of quicker with things, but this generally happens. And then we start to get vulnerable and then a tiff happens. We poke the bear, we want commitment, we want to push something, we want something to be our way, we want things to be this way. And really at the core of that is you haven't done the shadow work and the trauma work and it's 
being a self-fulfilling prophecy of this fear of they're going to leave me, they're going to be disappointed in me, they can't love me in this way, I'm too broken to be loved. All the narratives that we have inside of ourselves that we haven't, haven't actually faced yet, but in the midst of a actual vulnerable relationship, something that has the potentiality, there's no hiding in that. And so instead of leaning in, we lean out. Attachment breeds shadows. And this is the perk of doing the work outside of the relationship. This is the perk of sacred singlehood because you look at it and it's like, yeah, shadow, I see you. I felt this, right? In my relationship, when it started to get deep, I was like, I'm too broken to love. Said that to him, cried to him about it. He didn't try and fix me. He just held space because I trust myself to fix that problem. Not that it's a problem, but I have the solutions. I trust myself to have the solutions in those cases. Do you have that trust with yourself? The real reason that I truly believe that we lack intimacy and we lack deep intimate connections and relationships and longevity and partnerships nowadays is this. You don't trust yourself to hold it, to be okay if it leaves, to be okay in the space and the void that so many relationships have because we're all fucking figuring it out. And what would it be like to trust yourself? Who would you be in that? What would you call in? What type of partnership? One that you trust him to like surprise you at 6 a.m. dressed like a fucking lunatic and you have no idea where you're going. And also he told you that you can't get coffee and that is like the epitome of making you want to scratch someone's eyes out. But all you do is surrender and relax and trust them to lead and all of a sudden it turns into this romantic fucking getaway. Or the kind where it's like if they don't text you back within this time, you freak the fuck out. If they do this at that time, if they say the wrong thing, if you're seeking red flags and you're doing all this stuff, all okay. Like all of it is so normal and I want you to know that. Like all of it is so fucking normal because all of it has been you protecting yourself. All the ways you react in this world, the habits, the belief, the patterns, all that stuff. It is just how you learn to protect yourself. And so the fact that there's no self-trust yet that's okay that's okay for this however many years old you are that's then how you've learned to survive there's nothing right or wrong about it this isn't a binary situation there's so much gray area when it comes to trauma and nervous system in relationships like there is no right or wrong but what you do in that gray area matters how you lean in what do you want your self-trust to look like? What do you want this period to look like? What do you want the pause in your life right now to look like? What do you want to feel? Do you want to feel like you're hustling and running out of ammo and on the verge of burnout and having mediocre sex at best, if at all? Like, what do you want it to be? Can you imagine something freer? And if you can't, can you borrow This is why I love group programs. This is why I'm adding the hybrid into sacred singlehood because sometimes we just can't see it. We have to borrow the way people see us. We have to borrow the way other people see the world sometimes because we've been dealt a certain card in life. I was dealt big T traumas throughout my 20s from sexual assault to domestic violence to addictions to eating disorders, to chronic illness, to loss, to suicide attempts, to mental health issues. Like, I was dealt a card, a deck. And so I borrowed the way other people saw the world for a little bit until I got to figure out who I was at my core. And that's what was one of the other parts of sacred singlehood because it was like, When you're trying to build trust with yourself, you start to do everyone else's things. (laughs) When at the core, a good program is about bringing you back to yourself to trust yourself. That's what sacred single it is. To really know yourself, to remember yourself before all this, to build the trust, to build the regulation tools, to understand how your body works, to not pause the savage in you because she got you this far. She built an extraordinary business or life or career or whatever it is. Like, you did it. And as that is, that's enough. 
but it's the it's the wanting more that feminine desire that feminine like hunger for more in life because you truly get to have it all you truly do i sit here in front of you saying like i have everything i want of course i want more and that's okay i have no shame about admitting that but there's a balance there's a ways of doing this and it all comes from healing your trauma healing the nervous system and expanding your edges understanding your triggers and your trauma in the past and the present and really getting safe in the present so you could build resiliency for the future it's it's the only way of doing this there's a reason affirmations are cute but they don't actually work because trauma isn't healed in the mind it's healed in the body only way trauma is stored in the body this is my cognitive and talk therapy they're great but they don't heal and the work that i do which is why you see some of the reviews where it's like we helped heal in one hour what people have been in therapy for years over it's an art it really is in, in the things that you can do when you do this work is extraordinary beyond even dating it's it's for you to feel free to feel this form of self-trust to know where you're headed to know what you want to know how to activate your voice and vocalize your needs your wants your desires in such a way that people want to take care of you they want to show you around they want to commit to you they want to show you love it's out there it's right on that edge it's just doing this work and it gets to be pleasurable shadow work gets a bad rap i do it in such a good fun way that gets people the results and mind-blowing states so if you're interested in that if the, first off if this is landing for you i'd love to hear in the comments how this is landing for you what came up for you i always like to keep social media as a two-way conversation i feel like sometimes we're going so quick and we're scrolling and we're used to tiktoks and stuff like that but it's like making a deep connection on this i'd love for that and if this lands on your heart and you feel like you'd be called to share it with someone and you feel like it'd benefit them it means the world to me that you do that only only if you feel that i really do believe that it starts deeper conversations when we do this and it creates and it expands and that's how we can change the world is by deepening conversations and if you feel like you want to take that next step and join sacred singlehood this is four weeks I'm adding right now, as soon as you join, you'll get access to seven modules. And then I'm gonna be adding two to four live calls plus Telegram support. So you're gonna get live coaching inside of Telegram throughout the whole four weeks. So you get me as your coach in your pocket with like-hearted humans to walk you through, walk with you on this. And right now that is 25% off. Price increases on Friday. What better way to celebrate 222, 2023? Tomorrow's the 223, 23 portal. Oh, it's so juicy. Okay. I love you. I'm I'm honored to be on this walk with you and I will see you somewhere on the internet. Okay, my friends. Happy healings.